We've seen how powerful tools like ChatGPT are in our own lives, but how are companies and industries leveraging large language models and other advancements in AI? I booked a ticket to San Francisco and attended Zendesk Relate with Tina and Mickey to find out how AI is transforming customer experience. So Paulette, what are you most excited about for Zendesk Relate 23 today? Uh, well, I'm super excited about the keynote, but I'm really interested in, in the two emerging trend sessions that we're hosting today. One about new upcoming trends and the second doing a really deep dive into AI and customer service. So I think there's a lot of really good intel that customers will get out of today. What we're looking for is to improve efficiency in our support teams, help them to focus on the higher priority tickets that are coming in and the more complicated cases, improve the experience for our customers so that the natural function that they feel is more conversational. And I believe that AI has that capability. So here at Zendesk Relate 2023, talk to a couple people. Seems like everyone is really excited about AI, about large language models, and how that's gonna disrupt the consumer experience space. So for those that don't know, like what is consumer experience? It's all about, for example, call centers, customer interaction, anytime you interact with a company, that is a customer experience. So it's really important if you think about it to evaluate how AI is gonna change this. I mean, obviously ChatGPT, if you're thinking about how it interfaces with a business, how you know, you're working with ChatGPT to interface with, for example, OpenAI and knowledge, there's a lot here and I expect the space is gonna change really fast. So today we're gonna to learn a lot about how it's gonna change, if it's gonna change, and what the future might hold. You can feel the scope of this, right? Like you can feel that this is a shift in in technology. The genie's out of the bottle. I have to at least learn about this, start asking questions, see how I can incorporate this into my world. Because if I don't, I could very easily get left behind. The FOMO, the feeling of like, if I don't get a handle on this, then I'm never gonna get a handle on it. I'll be like the dinosaurs. That feeling is very visceral for some and very real. And I can appreciate that. I have felt that. The technology is here. It's not gonna go anywhere. So there's really not any being left behind. I think it just comes down to really the right tool for the job and what makes sense for the industry and the clients. A responsible approach would be to pause and evaluate that and then make your choice from there, regardless of what industry or client base you're serving. Six years ago, if you were automating 30% of your customer service inquiries, you were amongst one of the, had one of the most sophisticated AI programs in the world. Now we're seeing businesses reach 70, 80% resolution rates using AI. That's a very, very meaningful difference over the last little while. The last few percentage points uh, are gonna be quite a bit more difficult than the first few. Yeah, I mean, do you think it's possible to get to 100%? I do. Yeah, I think it's pretty interesting because I think most of the use cases that uh, you see on like social media right now have been in some ways like empowering like individual creators on how to use generative AI and large language models. How do companies like either provide products and services or integrate to empower like existing um, employees. So I think that's been pretty interesting, seeing some of the stuff that they're rolling out. And I think it also brings up a lot of questions like in a role like customer, customer success, what is the real value in the human to human interaction? What are the things that you can kind of like really double down or niche down on that will help you like stand out? The number of people who are interested in AI and the way the speed at which it's being incorporated into customer experience is far faster than I had expected. There's a lot of trends that come and go, right? But in this case, it's different because it actually is being integrated into user products immediately. It's already happening right now. And that's what I found the most interesting. It's only been a few months since GPT-4 was made publicly available. How are companies already producing products that are leveraging this technology? How do they balance the pressure to innovate with the need to test and iterate? I mean, a lot of the, the most aggressive advancements in large language models have happened fairly recently, and you're already integrating them into products. Mm -hmm. It's a very fast turnaround. How are you able to ensure that these products work, as well as any of the kind of downsides of integrating these in such a quick period of time? Great question. I think we were fast. You think we were fast. Our CEO thinks like we were very slow, like everyone launched before us. And I think the reason why we launched a little bit after was because we wanted to make sure that was in place. So working like closely with OpenAI to try to understand like nail the data flows, 
uh, try to have them not store our data because to some customers like that was not a possibility. Uh, we have data locality requirements. Being like a big company like that, we have regulators. We need like if OpenAI is going to be super accessible and we're going to send service data to them, like we need to inform these regulators. So all of this has been a long process. I don't know what other companies did. The smaller ones could innovate faster and be like take the risk. In our case, we, we didn't. Uh, but if you notice, like we, we only launched use cases that are quite controlled and have a human involved. We are working on the other ones, but until we are confident the technology is not gonna hallucinate and like give the wrong reply, it's very, very risky for a company like Zendesk to launch half-baked things to customers. If you think about the average help desk, right? There's probably 200 to 2,000 things that people call in for. Change my password, where is my delivery? I need to make a product change. We've been categorizing those intents, recognizing the entities that those intents apply for, apply to, and building out this repo so that when a customer inquiry comes in for one of our customers, we can be like, this person wants to do a return, they want to return a red dress. But what's really going to differentiate companies, I think, is companies like Zendesk, where we're out ahead of the pack, where we can leverage the trillions of interactions we have every year, the unique data set that we have expertise in to finish the last mile of AI deployment. And I think it is a last mile problem. It's societally, we have a new tool and we love tools. We love tools that save us time. As I said on stage, I'd always believe that reasoning and creating would be the sole domains of the human species. And in the last six months, I have realized that they are not, right? As a result, I think we're going to see this period of, of, of flowering creativity. I'm most excited as, you know, the people in my family and the people I work with who are not technologists start consuming this and realizing what they can do about it. And we are a nonprofit, under-resourced, typically smaller teams with outsized needs. We will get requests that happen over and over and over again. It might be, how do I get my visa to enter Poland as a Ukrainian refugee? Or I'm a person migrating from Venezuela through Colombia where their healthcare services. When there's a case that needs to be escalated to an agent, that usually would mean that this is a complex case or it's a sensitive case and there's a higher possibility for there to be harm uh, if, if it's not delivered in an appropriate manner. So what we need to be really smart about is understanding with no margin for error, can we rely on AI to do the escalation to an agent or is this actually creating more barriers for us? Really interested to hear how you're using voice, how customers, companies are leveraging this uh, when it comes to an AI integration. We are taking that voice conversation, summarizing it, also including like a bullet points of all the things that you need to know that are relevant into that conversation and transcribing that, putting that within a service ticket within Zendesk, for example, because we're here at Zendesk Relate. Um, and then you're able to report on that conversation, gain insights from that conversation. And like most companies do more with less. At Relate, it seemed like every company had an integration with OpenAI or some other private language models. I got to thinking, is this the future of data science? Will we be outsourcing our models and our analysis to large language models? Will the role be more focused on implementation than analysis and model training? I attended an LLM meetup to find out. While I had to make a quick exit, it was crazy to see how quickly the infrastructure for tuning your own LLMs has developed. It was exciting to see powerful large language models are accessible and tunable for hobbyists and engineers alike. Open source models are promising for innovation, but they also present issues with misuse from bad actors. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in tuning your own LLMs. After this experience at Zendesk Relate, it's clear to me that LLMs will continue to integrate more and more with our daily lives. It's great to see that companies like Zendesk are rolling out a measured approach to this rapidly moving trend. It was also eye-opening to see how much transformative change AI can have on an industry like customer experience. Technology will move increasingly fast. Jobs will change. Heck, the world will change. How are you preparing? Let me know in the comments.